But here's something to think about, men. When it comes to laying our life down for our wives, where, where do we struggle with? You know, where do we battle with? There's a lot of areas. Again, there's one area, and I'm going to get to it in just, just a second here, that is probably one of the most petrifying and serious areas that, that, that marriages struggle with. And, and I can tell you this because we run into it all over the country. All over the country. And it's been a problem that goes, stems so far back and it has led to so many destructive elements in family. Unbelievable. And yet people have taken it upon themselves just as the women who claim, you know, the ability, or excuse me, the right to kill a child. Okay, people have taken this upon themselves as well to say, look, it's my right. It's my life. It's my body. It's my marriage. Church can't tell me what to do. Contraception. Birth control. It is not a right to have a child in marriage. And it is not a right to turn away from God's design. We have the free will to do it. We have the free will to walk the narrow road. We have the free will to walk the wide road. We have the free will. You know, Whoopi Goldberg recently said in this, this pro-death march that they had, the 500,000 plus women in Washington, where she said, you know, God even gave us free choice. Well, sure he did. Just like he gave Adam and Eve free choice. You can obey me or you can disobey me. But the bottom line is this. Marriage is about two main things. It is about the unity of the husband and the wife for the sake of leading the other one to heaven, getting the other one to heaven. And it's about being open to the creation of life to make that family, which is the cell of society, as the Holy Father says. And when you and I shut the door on that, through birth control, contraception, or any form of abusing that gift, we are saying to God, I make the decisions, not you. I can't handle this, Lord. Therefore, you know what? My wife... I may never see her again. I realize that. She could pass away in a car accident. She could die in her sleep. So could you. So could I tonight. We do not have control over our lives. How many of you woke up today thinking, I'm going to breathe today? <gasps> okay. Make my heart beat today. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. I'm going to digest the food from last night. Okay. Grow the hair. Hair fall out. Okay. Here we go. Girls, <gasps> oh, 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 forgot to breathe. No, we don't do that. You're going to go to bed at night thinking you're waking up in the morning. You're going to expect, I'll see you in the morning, sweetheart. I love you. Love you too. Good night. See you in the morning. Okay. You don't know that. You do not know that. How many of you have that kind of control of your life? I don't. I tried. It doesn't work. We try to take things in our own control. So when it comes to the most amazing gift that God gives between a man and a woman, the, the, the ability to procreate. Be open. Be open and let God do what he wants to do. What was one of his commands? The key command to Adam and Eve. Be fruitful. Multiply. Nowhere in scripture do you see him say, but stop at 2.3 children. He doesn't even say stop at 6. Seven, eight, nine. I know families, 12 and 13 and 14 children. They're some of the happiest families around because, not because they have a lot of kids, but they were open to whatever God wanted. That's why they're happy. They had said to God from the beginning, yes. And when they struggle with it, you know, a man that we met down in Houston, uh, Texas, a couple weeks back, you know what he said to me? He said, I, we'd had two kids, a boy and a girl. I went and had uh, the vasectomy, got myself snipped, everything's fine, there you go. Then something's bothering me. Then a uh, religious experience to some degree, he went to an event which really prompted him to go to confession for the first time in many years. Something started to happen inside. He went back, had a reversal. Now they have a little girl who's about three years old. She's adorable. And he looked at me and he said, you know what? I had closed the door to God. And when I finally said, yes, again, look what I have. How could I say this wasn't worth it? Now, that's a tough thing. I realize that. My wife and I, again, we had one miscarriage last summer. And my wife does have um, a little something with her heart. And that's all I'm going to say. And so we have to be very careful. Uh, but she still wants children. And she still says it's up to God. It is up to God. She'd be the first one to stand here and say, and if in that pregnancy I lose my life and my child lives, it's all in God's hands anyway. Just like you sitting here right now and me standing here right now is in God's hands. We do not have control of our lives on. If there's any part of you that's resisting this, you know, I just, I just don't know. I'm simply going to say this. You look at statistics even of people who practice birth control, people who reject God's design, people who do not have God in their life, you name it, whatever. The divorce rate is what? Between 40 and 60 percent, depending on the study. For people who do not practice birth control and, and, and are open to life, only using NFP when the church permits it in extreme cases of emotional health and, and such, and, and that's something, you know, more time to get into we won't do. But only in extreme cases the church even permit NFP. In other words, from the time you're married, you'd be open to life. So you make God the center, prayer, sacraments, do not contracept, do not shut God out of your life. You make that prayer life just like, like, the, like the blood in your veins. The divorce rate is less than 1%. You tell me what makes sense. 